Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is not listening. You have to stop listening. Um, what I want to really emphasize here is that a lot of the times you're going to go into a battle and you're going to hear some guy and he's generally going to be sitting in the spawn and he's going to start screaming at the team to push or spot, whatever the case may be. Now, you've got to be able to take that information and see if it's worth using. Generally, it is absolutely pointless and it is the biggest waste of time. If you are going to start listening to these people, you're going to die earlier and you're going to get really frustrated with the game. And I think this is an important thing to address, the getting frustrated part. You can see right now there is a bloke in the T110E4 yelling attack. If we look at the minimap here, uh, he is there. Right? He could not be further away from the map unless he uninstalled the game. Like the only way he could be of less use right now is uninstalling the freaking game. And I completely ignore him. In fact, I give him a little bit of curry for it because this is the other thing. Six minutes 30 has gone on the... Is, there is like 30 seconds gone on the clock. And yet I get people all the time coming into the channel in the comments section and accusing me of having special RNG or are getting a special cue. And it's not true at all. You need to understand, like this guy calling us noob facts and all kinds of things. Um, you need to understand that the game is seven minutes long. You have seven minutes to get the job done. Seven minutes. And if you try to do it too quickly, you're wasting your time. Uh, one of the big hallmarks of a good player is how difficult it is to land punches on them. If you look at the guys who are playing at 70%, sure, a lot of them are running in platoons with other really good players. That's fair enough. But for the most part, even when you know where they are, they just won't give you easy damage. And that's the biggest thing I see. Like The, the difference between me running at like 63% or so and guys that run consistent 70% is not 7%. It's the moon. Because I'm patient enough to put myself in good positions. And I'm good enough to take advantage of most of them. But they put themselves in good positions nearly every time. And they very rarely, very rarely do they not take advantage of them or do they lose snapshots or gunfights or, or miss. And one of the big things about it is they're patient and they don't listen to the idiots in their spawn. Now you can see, despite all this yelling and screaming, our mate is still in the spawn. Okay, he's still in the spawn and we're now moving down the flank and we're winning the flank and we're putting ourselves from hard cover to hard cover and we're not taking a lot of damage. In fact, we're taking zero damage and we're doing our job and there is four and a half minutes left. It has been two minutes since that idiot started spamming attack and he is still in spawn stop listening to these guys nearly every time you're going to look at them and you're going to look at their stats afterwards and they're not going to be that impressive now i want to get something out of the way very early here um as we go through i'll show you another game here like this is a very very good 8k game from athena uh the wz 121 uh, you were you were hiding he's telling me right, negative um if you're a 40 to 48 percent player right and there's a huge section of the player base that is that you need to slow the hell down you need to move with your team and if you're in a td or a heavy that's really important if you're in a medium you can be more flexible and you can move yourself around the map and be more successful i mean we did 3k 3.3k and we took very little damage and we pushed and we spotted and there was still like two and a half minutes left at the end. People are bad. So I'm not saying that you need to be worried about your win rate. I'm not saying that you're a terrible player or I'm not casting aspersions at all. What I'm telling you is that if you want to improve it, 
you need to put some discipline in your gameplay. You need to slow down. When I'm playing badly, it is nearly always from overextending. It is nearly always from being impatient, and it is nearly always from making bad trades. And you're going to see a fantastic game here, and this is going to come down to a 2v1. Uh, and he's doing so much damage, Athena, but I want you to watch. This is really clear to me. Like, when you look at this, look at the way he is absolutely making sure that whatever happens here, he is not taking damage. Remember how I talked about how good players don't take a lot of punches? It's very hard to land punches on them. Well, he's taken absolutely nothing in terms of risk there. He's left that Sheridan to deal with life on his own, and he's put two shots into him. That becomes pretty important later. The other thing that you'll find is a common trait in really good players, and if you want to improve your win rate, is the way they look at the minimap. Lagoon is a particular case in point. You can see around here, there are three red tanks all lined up. Um, in fact, there's four. The, one of them is this. There's actually five. Uh, our hero here is approaching this very much as a third party. And that's good because a medium has a lot of DPM that it generally isn't able to just hold. It has to put itself in the right position to utilize that. There's a Conway waiting. And I really love this. We're going to look at this just quickly. Um, he's not sure. He thinks there's going to be someone around this corner. Watch the way that he identifies this. Once he gets hit, still gets a beautiful snap in. That's a really, really fast place snap. And he's going to look at the minimap. And he's then going to poke his head to the right. And he knows that the Conway's there. But if you look at the minimap, there's a wall right along here. He pokes, makes sure that that Krenwagen is behind the wall and that the Conway is isolated and that he can safely go down. And while this just looks like he's flowing into it and he's really lucky, that's bullshit. A lot of people play the victim like this and they're like, oh, I wish I got teams like this. You're going to see at various times in this drive that Athena checks and makes sure of his angles. Is uh, if you've ever read the Expanse books, um, you'll know that it was always doors and corners you got to watch out for, and that's that's exactly what he's doing here, and he is now moving on to his next target, and he's making sure that he is not in the line of fire. That saves the T30, which is important as we progress, and all these little things actually keep adding up to something at the end, which is what I love. You win these games in the margin. You win these games. In the small, like the small DPMs and the angles. Uh, if you want to see how to angle a WZ121, that's pretty good there. It's not just about driving out with the one angle and, and letting it be easily penetrated. It's about giving it a shot that looks like it's going to be penned. And then moving until it becomes one that doesn't pen. Um, this is low-key, like my favorite part of the game. Um... You're going to see that this is over 5k now, moving up towards 6,000 damage. Watch this. No, takes one there, but drives forward, puts hard cover between him and two other red tanks. Beautiful shot right on the undercarriage. And then checks again. Where's that Sheridan? Checks, checks, checks. Sheridan want, he's on the long reload, and he can't help himself. He wants to come out. Puts hard cover between him and the Sheridan. Gets the shot. Checks. Tell me that you're a 45% player and that you are always doing that. That you're always checking behind you. Like, you're always clearing your angles. Because that's how you save yourself from dying. Just sitting there and tunneling. Think to yourself, as things are happening, what can I do to make yourself better? Watch the E100 here. This is play of the game stuff. Roll straight through straight through in front of the bullet. Takes it because he has the hit points, shares it, saves our amigo here who's got all the DPM and is watching again for that Sheridan. Checking, 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 checking. And then hard cover between him and the IS-7. Forcing the IS-7 to actually engage the E-100. Giving him the opportunity to dump deeps. 8,000 damage, fair bit. Uh, 
I mean, that's a wonderful drive. It's not a shot missed. Uh, it's going to be a seven kill RAS, which is pretty bloody impressive. And it's been a really solid run all round. High rolling at the end for 459 and getting the job done. Really enjoyable, really good drive, really deserved win. Okay, so let's keep rolling through. Uh, we're going to keep doing a few of these and uh, just wonderful stuff. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of maps here. Uh, and this isn't particularly special games or anything. I make some big mistakes in these. Um, nothing particularly huge. This is a, a favorite area of mine. There is the corresponding uh, tree over there. You can drive up. What you generally don't see um, is anyone going up here in a medium unless they're the only medium on the flank. If you're the only medium on the flank, you should hit that tree up there on the left uh, because it will give your team massive vision and it will cut off anyone trying to cross in a heavy behind the TD position. Uh, I'll show you on the minimap here. It's really, really clear. Uh, if you're the only medium on the flank, you drive straight to that spot and you get vision all down this line from spawn and across. And that means you'll get heavies that will want to cut around and then go behind the C cap. And if you spot them as they're doing that, then your TDs down here at the one mark have clear shots down that line and you can really pump them. And that's an important thing and a, a really important part of this map. But it's very rare you'll be the only medium spawned here. I will go there if it's a light versus a medium because you'll get that moment to spot. It's quite similar to the high end of dead rail. Uh, and we set this shot up really nicely on the T TVP there. Um, this is another thing that if you want to improve your win rate, don't just think about the shot you're taking. Think a little bit further down the road at the next shot. Like, where is the next shot going to be? Where is the next easy shot? The next part that I can go to that is going to be an easy hit. And that, for me, there was just a clear example of rolling to an area that was completely free of tanks, but I was sure the TVP was running and that he was going to have to go over there. Um, we talk about angles all the time in this. Okay, so... If you look down there and you look over there, those are the two areas I can get hit from. But where I can't be hit from right now is the TD spot over there, all right? We've seen the TVP leave. We read the minimap and we see that there's two tanks there. There's another tank uh, at the back, a TD, and the medium is, is right there in the middle. We've got a heavy spotted over here. There's only one tank not even spotted at the moment, and I'm certain he is over on the left as well. So we're very comfortable here right now in this rock. That's a, a position you can take. Where, oh, this is a great one too. Where this uh, bat chat over there is positioned is excellent for clearing people down here below this C cap. It can be difficult to cross from there behind. If you're spotted, I will generally engine boost and then hug hard up against that wall. If you don't hug hard up against that wall, the object triple seven can shoot down into you and it can be very, very difficult. But if you can isolate a target, you can make trades down that line and clear them. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about here was um, that little section there. And I'm we're going to have a look at that from another direction as well. I think we end up losing this one with a 4K game. Uh, yeah, there is a section here I want to have a, ch have a quick chat about. This little area down here. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. So the the key here is there's a there's a badger and a leopard down there. Uh, things are pretty evenly paused here, uh, poised here, not paused. Uh, just trying to put damage down there. I don't know the leopard is there at the moment, but I've been spotted and I think I'm all right. But okay, if you are in this TD spot as a medium, you've got to make sure that you line up directly with that rock. If you don't, then you can get shots coming down that angle there. And you're going to see that happened really clearly. I lose my angle and it's just from being lazy because I'm excited to get side shots into the Badger who has absolutely no uh, ability to move around and shoot me. And you, you just get a little bit greedy. And see, that's the 401 I took there. Only a very small angle, but if you're spotted, a Leo 1 can absolutely donk you. Um, there's something else I will point out here that a lot of people uh, who are, I mean, this is another just absolute golden tip. If you just want to pick up a few extra bits of win rate every day, hang on. When you're watching the minimap, that badger, for instance, 
he's a non-tarotted TD. Wherever that triangle is moving towards is where his gun's pointing. Sounds simple, right? But you're going to see if you time it right, that allows you to exploit things. Uh, it really does. Uh, the, the Badger wants to push up towards me and he's going to try. Now, the Leo's going to push up with him, right? I'm just spotting back here. Now, the reason I'm coming back is if you watch this minimap, nothing moves on the minimap for ages. Nothing spotted. And when nothing's spotted on the minimap, you need to get vision. If you're in a medium, you need to get vision. There's the Leo. Give him one to go on with. Now, that Badger, if you watch, you can see that he's moving below me to the left. But I can also see just by watching the minimap that that's the direction he's going. That's where he's headed. That's where his gun's pointing. And that means that I can actually be aggressive here, pop down, hit the Leo, and then turn around and have a clear shot of the Badger and walk away a happier human being. So just having a drink while we do this. And I, I want to make videos like this because I've been playing a lot lately. I've had I don't know, 1,400 games on one account this month and another 500 on another. So I'm playing a lot. And uh, there's some people out there that just don't know what they're doing. And that's fine. Um, everyone starts not knowing what they're doing. But when you don't know what you're doing and you're up at the 50,000 game mark, um, that's, that's rough. Okay? And they've obviously got the skills to shoot and press the button and track targets well. And if they add a couple more bits like this into their gameplay and start thinking about it like that, then they're going to be very much improved and they'll be happier with the game and they won't bother me in the youtube comments carrying on about conspiracy theories as to why they're coming second this is a seven tank game seven people the idea that you're going to be able to like i won 16 games the other day in a row in the scorpion and at the end of it i was trying to lose like just to see if i could throw and i was getting really good teams and then i i went out and i lost like on stream, I lost like six games in a row in the Fosh. And it was all on me then. Like, I could see how badly I was playing. I'm really bad at turreted TDs, non turreted TDs right now. Um, everyone gets shit map breaking, but you have to work hard so that there will be possible wins that pop up where if you didn't make the errors you're making, the simple errors that you bleed, too many hit points on a trade or you come out in front of a gun instead of behind a gun, then you'd win more games. That's on you. That's on you to get better. It, I'm I'm about a 63 to 65% player when I really focus. And that's just an honest assessment. I'm not a 70% win rate guy. I'm not one of the guys that you see running around with 75% win rate. I mean, I used to play with them a lot and I know what they're like, and I know how their average damage is always pumping around that 3k plus mark, and I just can't get there on very many tanks. There's a few tanks where I'm like that, and they absolutely suit my play style. So you need to be aware of this, and you need to basically accept that you can get better at the game, and you need to be accountable, and you need to say, hey, I'm going to lose some games. It is absolutely unchangeable and unequivocal that you are going to lose games because the other team is a better team or you make mistakes and there will be games you lose just because your team is rubbish but there will be games you win and you never acknowledge it where you play like a rat's ass and you win because your team was really good or your team played really well or your 183 got an ammo rack on a 75 percent is4 this happens and i love the fact that if you are even keeled about this you will acknowledge that as being part of the world and part of the gaming setup and move on like that section just there we played really well and we got three and a half k out of it and they just bled too much because they they saw one solo tank and then suddenly we got help with a i think it was a badger that rolled up behind us and, and they just bled too much and they made themselves vulnerable and we were able to take one tank at a time and the next thing you know, they've lost and they've turned to an easy win if they had all moved together one at a time. They could have cleared me off that flank really, really quickly. 
the IS-7, the TVP particularly, and they blew it. And, you know, that's just how this game plays. Uh, I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be doing more of these. So I, I hope you like them. And uh, if you have any particular tanks or maps or things that you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But I just, these general win rate tips, I think, are really, really important for people as we go forward. Anyway, look after yourselves. Stay safe in the battlefield. And until next time, bye for now.